What is up YouTube and welcome to episode 61 of the Chaos Daily. Let's get into it. Back in the uh, workshop again today. You guys seem to like this. I don't know why. Like, the, the audio is not as good. I, when I'm recording in my office, I use OBS and I can use the, the built-in audio MacGuffins, the, the, the magic that OBS comes with to make audio sound good and um, to try and remove some of this room echo. Um, there, there are no panels in that room. I'm not using any acoustic panels. It's all about position of the mic and the audio setup. I'm gonna see how I can do the same with this out here. Let's see what Premiere has to offer as far as audio MacGuffins goes. So um, the printer's not working, as you can see. Well, it's working, it's just not running. I should probably say it's not running, not working, because that's the wrong way to say it. Oh, I hate the English language. We have the parts that I printed in the curing chamber. These are all failures. Um, yes, there are big honking nasty things all through some. Some of them are like, eh, okay. But then you look closely at places where the spars and stuff are supposed to join into. Um, and stuff's a bit wonky, not going. So what I've been doing is, and hopefully you can sort of see it, and I hope Soraya Tech's watching, watching. I'll email them. I'll email them a link to this video. So what I did was, was I wanted to test. These are all printed together. But I wanted to test the difference between the gray and the white. And so what I did is I did these ones with a lot more gray. This one's all gray and blue, and it, it printed beautifully. This is amazing. This, I added another 25% of white and blue. So this is white and blue, one to four ratio, and gray and blue, one to four ratio, but it's a one to four ratio of those ratios, if that makes sense. Um, so I added a bit more white and blue to this one to try and see what happens if you slowly, progressively add white. This is now three parts white, one part gray, and you know, the quarter blue. Um, these are obviously printed together. So you can see the color difference there. And yes, there there is indeed an incredibly noticeable difference um, between the parts that were printed all with gray with a little bit of white. The little bit of white actually came out quite nice. So I could substitute probably 25% white with gray. Um, not that you would want to. I'd do it for aesthetics reasons for the color, but the gray is not too bad. I quite like the gray. But yeah, so, and these, these are with mostly white with a little bit of gray. If we look at the support material, this is ungodly, I know, but this printed all of the parts like such. So I printed all these together. That was way too ambitious. I, I should have learned my lesson the last time I tried to print loads of stuff together and stuff goes wrong. But the fact that they all mostly printed tells me that if maybe I'd printed it with the gray, they might have worked. I don't know. I'm running out of resin to you know continuously test these things and it's very wasteful to trying stuff just to get it to failure when you know the solution, which is to print with the... Anyways, um, so I'm gonna have to print these again, but I'm gonna have to print them separately and I I think I'm going to have to get another LCD screen. We'll see. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop printing parts for the Albatross for now. I wanna print something else. Now you've probably noticed over here on the next to the bench of me, the lenses I ordered for my camera have arrived. Yeah, for my phone. Yes, I don't have a DSLR, but now I can pretend I do again. I used to have a DSLR, but no longer, it got stolen. So these are all fantastic quality. I paid like 15, 16 bucks for them on AliExpress. They're amazing. These are really good quality, like all aluminum um, lens housings and stuff. This is plastic. Um, this doesn't fit on my phone. I knew it wouldn't when I bought it. Like I knew for a fact it wouldn't <laughs> just because of how weird the shape and case, like my phone looks like it's inside a rugged case, but that's actually the phone. It, it's not in, I don't have a protective case for my phone. The phone is a protective case. It's awesome. Um, so I knew this wouldn't work. So, but that's not a problem. I have a resin printer and I'm already printing bits for my phone. So what I've started doing is I've started on CAD and you can probably see it here. Um, first off, I started making parts for the tripod. I need a new quick, quick release for the tripod because this tripod, when I bought it, it didn't have a quick release and that's why it was so cheap. I bought it at a charity shop or whatever. I'm designed a new quick release and the quick release has some holes in it to take these honking big cables Kevlar carbon fiber rods. These aren't even tubes, these are solid. These, this thing will take a force, it doesn't say, but I'm guessing th th this will take a good 300 kilograms of force to break. Like th these, they're, they're used for if you break your femur or your bones in your leg and you have screws and stuff drilled into your leg to straighten out the bones. They use these on the outside cage to hold the, the, the screw racks and everything to keep your bones in place while it's resetting. So that's what these are for. And that, that's why my mom gets these from the hospital for me. They're, they're amazing. Once they're used and they have expiry dates and stuff, so quite often they just get thrown away and they're, they're perfectly good, not a scratch on them. Like there's a little, couple of little scratches here where you can see they've been used to hold somebody's leg together. So it's good that I'm repurposing stuff that is very high quality that would have just been thrown away. So yeah, these will be on the first part for the quick release on here. And then there is a telescope 
telescopic junction, which is basically, it's gonna be a block with holes on the top, holes in the bottom, and a cap, so it's gonna be two sets, like, let's see if I can do this. Uh, come on, hand-eye coordinate, coordination, don't fail me now. So, it's gonna do this, yeah? So it'll be telescopic. So there's gonna be two blocks like this. This will be fixed on the top, and this one will be fixed on here, and they will do this. There we go, like that. So I'm making one of those, and that's gonna be the telescopic rack that goes onto the phone, because sometimes I want it tapped in where it is like now, when I'm recording at myself, and then sometimes I wanna record down on the bench. And so I need it to cantilever out over the bench pointing down. That's all designed up, that's gonna get printed next, and then I'm gonna start working on the rest of the magnetic mount that the phone is gonna to clip to. That's gonna have the rail, as well as the bracket that holds. There's a little screw-in ring that was on the inside of here. Now I've pulled it out because I'm, pff, this is useless to me. I knew it was useless to me when I ordered it. I don't care, I was gonna do something else with it. Um, but I needed that little metal screw-in adapter, and that matches with the screws on here, and you screw the lenses on. So I'm gonna make a little housing that is part of the magnetic frame that clips onto the phone and holds it in place. So yeah, that'll cover it for today. We'll keep it short today. I've, I've gotta to now get the vat cleaned out and I think I'm gonna to have to replace the FEP sheet. That's another thing that could be causing this is the FEP sheet that is sticking. So when it goes to lift, um, it's tearing away the part that it's trying to stick to this part and it gets pulled away with the FEP sheet and then it comes back down and it clumps up. So that's another thing that it could be. And another thing that tells me that it could be that is that if we look at the support material in certain places, before it even started printing the part, there are big gaps. I don't know if you can see that, there's a big gap where it wasn't printing support material and then it started printing that row of support material. And thankfully, but the way support material is all inter-supporting with these braces and stuff, um, if it skips a few layers, it can usually ride itself a little bit later on. Here, you can see them just there. I hope it focused for you. We'll see. Um, I should never do this again. This was it's just being greedy. It's being lazy, um, not being patient, uh, getting ahead of myself. So that was a bad idea. So yeah, I'll, um, I'm gonna try and get a hold of Soraya Tech and pull out Piopoli, see if I can get a screen on order. Uh, I'm gonna get that FEP sheet changed out. And, um, and yeah, we'll leave it there for today. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you watch the video twice. Go subscribe to my other channel if you haven't. Link in the description. And as always, I've been Chaos. And until next time, expect the unexpected. And I will see you guys later. And a special thank you to all my patrons that help support the channel. If you would also like to support the channel, there's a link in the description.